Hello and welcome to stage five of Pursuit of Victory. I am still running this full speed, the test I started to run yesterday in stage four. I was getting really bored. And so, oh, I gotta turn back on my uh, race display here. Yes, there we go. I was getting really bored and I thought, you know what? I wanna drive this thing flat out and just win by big amounts. You're not supposed to do that. I'm a huge advocate of saying, don't do that. Why is that? A lot of you know, because it's gonna get really hard later on and there's nothing you can do about it. Oh, well, this event predates recommended PR. So, there probably is something we can do about it. And it's probably as simple as just quit, retry a race to lower the bots again. If that's true, then we should be able to run as fast as we want to. And as soon as it gets to be too difficult, just quit and retry a whole bunch of times and get easy bots. So we're gonna test that out fully today. I'm gonna keep running this as fast as I can. And then right, let's see, uh, the last race we'll see, hopefully that's gonna be like a cup race and I can just try, quit, retry, and see what happens. And see if the bots lower again. Theoretically, this should work, but I'm your test subject. That's why a lot of people don't even start these events till I finish them, or they run like two or three days behind me, just to see, just to let me find any glitches or any problems. So that's what we're gonna find out. So right here, I'm pretty sure it said finish, you know, at least 10th. And I'm like, yeah, no thanks. I'm just going to win because I like to win. So let's just go in. And there's more earnings too. Don't forget about that, is that I'm gonna make a lot more currency, which is important when you're starting a new account. Now, of course, if this was a recommended PR event, there's no way I'd be doing what you see me doing right now. But this isn't. So let's just see what happens. Let's see if there's gonna be any consequences to this. Gotta watch my breaking points in this car. Uh, you, you get in another car between stages and oh, you gotta recalibrate. Uh, Cause this car, you gotta get on the brakes earlier than some cars and later than others. So yeah, there we go. Obviously, yep, finishing the top 10. I did way better than that because I wanted to. So complete this in two laps. So this endurance race, you have no choice but to go two full, full laps. You can't go less and you can't go more. So honestly, there's nothing to this. Um, let's go four times regular speed, just for the fun of it. It looks kind of cool. Usually in endurance races, I was actually gonna try to go five or six laps. And initially I used clock management technique. And then I realized, oh, it just ends at the end of two laps. And so it just, uh, I'd wasted some time. Um, so I'm just redoing it. Clock management technique, if you're not familiar with it, that's where you really maximize your time. Like right now you see me overfilling my time or I'm passing cars when my, and, and, and my time's turning yellow. That means I'm wasting time. Ooh, that was bad. In clock management technique, you really pay attention to your clock so you can go as far as possible. Then there's endless endurance races where you don't, you just go, who cares about the clock? You run as fast as possible. You take off track cuts and you pass 42 cars as fast as possible. Then the race can go forever. A couple of them are possible at Spa, actually. Spa is one of the hardest tracks, though, to do that. All right, that was fast, really fast. No off-track allowed. We're not even going to do this full race because this is easy. 318.2 kilometers an hour, I believe that's what it said my target was. We're going to hit that pretty early, and then we're just going to uh, warp ahead to the end of the lap where I'm going to exceed it because, like I said, I'm not, I'm not doing anything just to the limits like I usually do, because this is a fast car and I want to drive it fast. So right at Eau Rouge here, I hit speed. Yeah, right around Eau Rouge, and now we've warped ahead to the back straight, okay? Well, the, not really the back straight, because it's not straight. The back section, heading to the last chicane, and I'm hitting, uh, so I did hit 331 going up Camel. Here I'm going over that, 338, and I'm on the brakes a little bit early, there's no reason to push it too much. You don't want to accidentally fail, right? Obviously an easy, easy stage, even if your bots are more difficult. And there we go. That's going to wrap up the speed record event. Really no challenges so far. Stage five is really easy, even with boosted bots. Ah, this is interesting. So this is where it's really good if you already know how to use tilt B controls. Um, this will not let you choose tilt A. Well, I didn't look, but old school events like this, they don't even let you choose that. So I didn't abuse it too much here. Ooh, that was nasty. If you have your race volume really high, 
you're gonna you can hear a pinging of the engine to go bing bing so you can get away with three dings then you've got to get off that gas and then a fourth ding will happen but you'll be okay if you push it any further than that you're gonna blow the engine and fail the stage and have to do it over again so you, you, there's also a little bit of a flashing that'll happen and I'm, I don't need to push it too hard in this event but there's been events like this in the past, uh, stages I should say, where I thought they were incredibly easy and some people ended up having a horrible time with them. So we're going to run through this whole thing at regular speed and so it's, you know, two full laps, but I will talk about some other stuff along the way. So you're lifting off the gas early. This car has very aggressive engine braking. So it slows down actually not, not much slower than if you had the brakes on. It's actually quite shocking. So you want to make sure, like, uh, I'm going to be careful here. Watch this. Woo! That was a close pass through the uh, Eau Rouge Roundion section. And yes, yeah, sometimes you see me clipping people. It's kind of a fun thing for me to do, I guess, when I get a little bit bored. Makes them slow down a lot. Ooh, that engine's getting a little bit hot at the, uh, as we reach uh, the comb corner. And I just wanted to let it cool down a little bit. It's still pretty hot, so... I need this to cool off before I get to the uh, the other long speed run. So I'm staying off the gas longer than normal. Definitely you don't want to waste time off track. When you're off track, the car has more resistance. So that heat's going to build up a lot more when you're off track. Just like uh, you might recall me talking about the uh, fuel consumption in stage four, that it's a function of time. Uh, so is engine overheating. It's just a function of time. It doesn't matter how fast or slow you're going or off track or on track. It's the amount of time you're on the gas and the amount of distance you can cover. So that's why the more upgrades you have, the easier a stage like this would be. So we just have to be careful of that. And we're overheating, we're getting pretty hot here. Haven't really reached that bing, bing, bing stage yet. So I'm able to really push this. Look how fast that temperature goes down. I actually like this more. We had, for quite a while, we had some overheating stages. I remember multiple Formula One events in like 2022, 2021, where the engine temperature would build up and it wouldn't go down no matter what you did. And I thought, what's going on? Like these guys don't seem to know how engines work because obviously an engine cools off if you get off the gas. Like. Oops, oh, nuts. It's not possible for an engine to keep on building temperature if you're not using it. Completely unrealistic. So I hope they don't keep doing that in the future because I thought that was just really not real racing. This is real racing. You're in, I, I've watched, I, I watch racing, so your engine temps are getting high and, and sometimes the um, crew chief or the principal is going to say, you know, oh, you just got to got to take it easy in nascar they would say you need more clean air like in nascar sometimes there's a very small slit on the front of the car uh, a gap where air can get in and they mess around with taping that up more or less uh, affects aerodynamics affects power and stuff like that so but then if you're on if you're slipstreaming a lot like uh, talladega or daytona something like that then you're not getting clean air and your engine can overheat or they get plastic on that little tiny gap man then that engine overheats and so they'll they'll get told you need to get some clean air or you need to get the plastic off and if you guys haven't seen this it's actually really cool if a guy gets some plastic on uh, stuck on his front bumper right over that area he will try to get up incredibly close to the car behind him we're talking inches and you get to a point where the uh, the air changes and the little piece will go flying off so of course they want to be careful when they're doing that so sometimes they'll actually uh, talk to a fellow team member and say hey our, our guy's gonna slipstream super close off your bumper it's to get some gunk off him can we can we do that and of course the teammate would be preferred so anyway pretty cool there interesting strategies and things that people have to do okay so here I, I'm unserviced and you start this with an almost blown up engine so here I'm gonna test this watch this this is me quitting and retrying a whole bunch of times look at the bots change guys look at the bots change so now I, I, I skipped a bunch of screens I did this like 20 times and maybe 25 times and then I serviced the car I maybe should have kept on going but 
I just wanted to see if it worked. It works. My theory is correct that because recommended PR didn't exist, you can lower bot difficulty whenever you want to. So, more flat out driving. That's what's gonna happen here. I'm gonna go over to the uh, to the fandom wiki page there, uh, just the one I'm most familiar with, and, and just take a look at the upcoming stages. Like, I don't think anything's gonna be changed in this event, so I wanna make sure that when I get to stage 10, that there are races that I could lose and then lower the bot difficulty if I need to. Even stage nine, I should take a look at that. Often the hardest race is going to be in the second last stage of an event. I find that really funny, but that's happened quite a lot. Sometimes it's the last stage, but often that can be the second last stage. Okay, listen. Okay, I didn't let it happen there, but I'm being very careful here. See that? See it flashed? This is where I'm pushing the limits of the ding, ding, ding. I really didn't want to hit triple dings very often. So I'm being careful. So yeah, and it flashes, but it's hard to watch for the flash. Um, the audible indicator is better. So if you listen, oh, I just let it go a little bit there. Yeah, it's so obviously you can hear it happening, that bing, bing. So you want to be careful. You want to make sure you don't get more than three bings before you're off that gas. You want to lift and coast as much as you can. I'm going to push this a little bit, but then I'll have a longer lift section. Eighth place. Oh, I'd love to get into the lead if possible. I don't think that's going to be possible. I think I think I would have had to lower the bots more to pull that off. Or of course buy upgrades, but I'm not, I'm not going to buy upgrades until I have to. I'm gonna see how cheap I can do this. I mean, what I hear people saying is that you need nine upgrades. Uh, there's, so, uh, R dollar upgrades, and you can get nine of them. Seven stage one or tier one upgrades and two tier two upgrades. I just wanna see, and maybe it's possible with even less currency. And we'll see, it'd be, uh, it'd be interesting to find out. Especially with me now earning more currency and not wasting time. I'm earning more currency in these races. Uh, because I can just slow down the competition when I want to. So that's going to be cool. I might end up really coming out ahead of this event. Okay, well, that's pretty much going to wrap us up. A uh, playlist link will pop up right away. Also, I'm going to throw up an endless endurance video for Spa. You might find that really interesting. Huge earnings potentials. Here's my upgrades. What upgrades? <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much for joining me today, guys. And uh, check out some other videos. Bye-bye.